So for the 26th lesson of class, we looked at ethics in regards to animal rights. And there are several issues that relate to this question. And these issues we're going to be exploring are the fur industry, animal testing and vivisection, that's when you test on a live animal, the meat industry, vegetarianism compared to veganism, uh, hunting and fishing, the legal status of animals and punishments for those who abuse animals, uh, the role of animals in a world that's increasingly overpopulated, how other nations treat animals, the standards of treatments for pets, and then at the end I'm going to ask you, are your assertions logical? Are you consistent in how you see animal rights? So the first in issue we're going to be looking at is the fur industry. Now the fur industry is a forty billion dollar industry, so you can extrapolate from that a lot of people are making their living off of that. So if we were to lose this industry, that would be a lot of economic hardship for those people. But then again, is it an ethical industry? Is it not an ethical industry? Now, what are animals for? Now, nature has made animals with a hide that have been used for centuries to keep warm. Um, is it okay, considering our past? Um, in modern times with synthetic fibers, do we have to relook at, you know, relook at this issue? Um, does the method of keeping and euthanizing animals have any bearing on your belief? So some people might say, uh, I don't want animals to suffer in the process of becoming fur. But then again, they're going to be killed to make fur. Uh, you can see here all these animals in cages. You might say, that's really unethical. I would never buy fur. Would it be different if they were captured in the wild? And which animals are acceptable for fur and which animals aren't? So some people might say, well, I would get a mink coat, but I certainly wouldn't wear a dog coat or a cat coat or a bunny coat. Um, how do you make that decision about what animal is acceptable for fur, which animal is not acceptable for fur? Now, the second issue we talked about is animal testing, uh, vivisection. So what ethical standards should we have in regards to testing on animals? Should animals be tested on or not? Are there certain animals that are acceptable to test on, others that are not? Now, again, what's your assertion based on? And here's the question. If we do not test on animals, how do we test certain products? So, for example, if I put shampoo in my hair, I don't want it to burn my scalp, how can I find out whether that shampoo is safe for human consumption? Uh, do we test on criminals? Do we test um, just in the free market and let, you know, the free market handle itself? The shampoo burns my skull. I will we'll recall the shampoo and it will go out of business. Uh, where do you draw the line between ethical testing and unethical testing? So, for instance, somebody might say, um, a cadaver, a dead animal, that's okay, but a live animal like this one here, that is crossing a line. But then again, um, if we do not test on this rat, how do we test items? Now look at the way they're treating the rabbits here. Um, is this unethical? Is this cruel? Uh, let's say these rabbits were raised specifically for this purpose. Does it have any bearing or not? Again, more questions than answers here. Now, the third issue is the meat industry, and I lumped together with vegetarianism and veganism. So we all have a choice. Some people choose to eat meat. Other people will be vegetarians, but they'll continue to have eggs and cheese. Now, veganism is a lifestyle where you will eat no animal products. It has to be all plant-based. No eggs, no cheese. Now, why do we do this? So if we look at the meat industry, it's a $1.5 trillion, with a T, industry. Again, a lot of people are making their money off of this. But again, is it an ethical process? Now you have to look at the environmental impacts. All of those animals require a tremendous amount of water. They require a tremendous amount of uh, grain and um, you know uh, animal food to be made. That takes an environmental impact. One thing we don't think about is the animal's feces and flatulence in terms of uh, damaging to the environment, but that's an issue. Uh, the health impacts. So the question, is it more ethical to eat a certain type of food because it impacts my health? for good or for bad. Now, some people swear if I stopped eating meat, I'd be more unhealthy. Some people claim if you stop eating meat, you'll become more healthy. The ethical impacts. Now, there are certain types of uh, meat production, kosher and halal practices, where there's a specific way the animal has to be butchered, and then it's okay. But if you don't butcher it that way, it's not ethical, it's wrong. I mean, what do they base these claims upon? And biological factors. Now, a lot of people will say, you know, uh, meat is a powerhouse. I mean, if you think about it on a biological level, the sun will put all of that energy into the plant. The, the uh, animal eats the plant. It concentrates all that energy. So when you eat that meat, it's a, it's a, it's a protein powerhouse. It's biologically 
uh, what you need. Now, when I was teaching you in history class about hunters and gatherers, obviously you need to do that to survive, but can you um, get that protein, get that health with a modern diet? Um, so should we even look at that issue with old eyes? So again, a lot of questions. I hope you can provide me some good answers. Now, hunting and fishing is another issue that relates to animal rights. And again, economic impact, big industry, especially here in Michigan. And here's the question, the purpose of hunting and fishing. Does it matter your motive if you're doing it just for fun and you release the fish? Is that okay? Bearing in mind you're putting a hook through its mouth. Maybe that's not okay. Uh, if I'm hunting just to leave the animal in the field for coyotes to eat it versus um, eating it, uh, regulation. Should hunting be regulated or should we be able to hunt when and where we want? Now, can we compare uh, hunting of deer and turkey or fishing for steelhead with the, here's these, uh, the Trump brothers who have killed a cheetah in Africa just for fun, just for trophy hunting? Is that a d different ethical standard? Now, how do we handle endangered species and poaching? What role do we have to protect these sorts of animals, if any, you might you might say nature, you know, <laughs> will take its course. These animals um, aren't viable anymore, and you know, so be it. Many many species have gone extinct. Tuskadoodles. Which animals are acceptable to hunt? Which ones are not? What do you base your rationale upon? So, here's a steelhead. Um, by the way, I did eat these, and here's a turkey I shot. I ate that turkey. Uh, do you consider me unethical? Was it ethical because I ate it? Would I be unethical if I didn't? Let's say I took the animal and I fed the needy and I fed the hungry. Would that make me an ethical person? Um, do fish feel pain? And does it matter? Now, some people say fishing isn't hunting. It's different because it's a different type of animal. Well, if I wound a deer or I put a hook through a fish's mouth, does it matter? And methods of hunting. Which methods are acceptable, which are not? Now, uh, there's a practice where some people in the world will go seek out hibernating bears and attack a, de a defenseless bear because it's asleep, and they will take the bear. Now, is that unethical versus going out into the woods and shooting a bear? Um, I don't know. You know, some people say trapping is horrible because the animal's trapped and they have to gnaw its leg off or it freezes to death. Trapping is wrong. Again, I'm curious to how you feel about this issue. Now, the next issue would be the legal issues that relate to animal rights. So what legal rights, if any, do animals have? Should the legal system protect animals? Should some animals have higher status than others? So for example, would a horse have a higher legal standard of protection than a rat? Um, most people, if a mosquito lands on their arm, you'll kill it no problem. Some people would take out a mouse, but they'll stop at a certain point. Um, how do we have this hierarchy of animals? How is it established? What is ethical? Um, here's a question. If some animals have higher cognitive abilities than severely impaired people, if you use logic, should they have more rights than them? Now, most people wouldn't say an animal has the same rights or more rights than a person, but some people pose that question. So, for instance, Coco here knew 2,000 words, had a pet, knew empathy, showed very human-like emotions um, compared to somebody who has never left a chair. Uh, how do we look at this issue? And then what legal statutes, if any, should be codified to protect animals and punish abusers? Now, a recent case a couple of years ago, uh, NFL player Michael Vick uh, was engaged in dogfighting, and he was sent to jail. Um, was that right? Was that wrong? Was he punished enough? Was he punished not enough? Uh, questions that are uh, tough to answer. And then in a world that is becoming increasingly overpopulated. Now, when I was born, there were 4 billion people on this planet. Now there's over 7 billion. As the population goes up and up and up, and here's the projected population, by 2100, we should be at about 11 billion people. How will people have to reconsider our relationships with animals? Uh, protected areas where animals reside, might we have to take them over just on a practical level for space and materials to build homes? Um, will animals essentially be put to farms, used for human production? Uh, should we still protect these areas? Uh, how will our relationships with animals change as the population goes up? And then looking at other nations' treatment of animals, I know we already learned about cultural absolutism, cultural relativism, ethical relativism, ethical absolutism, but are there international standards of animal treatment? Can we as a world say there are absolute standards of how we should treat animals. And how should we treat other countries that might deviate from how we see it? So for instance, whaling. Now in Japan, 
whaling is a very um, big industry, and they don't see a problem with it. Now, most countries in the world think it's wrong to kill whales, especially with whale populations going down, and Japan feels um, very offended that the world's telling them what to do. But should the world tell them what to do? Uh, the most horrible thing that I've seen in a long time in China, there's a dog-eating festival. And here's a picture from the dog-eating festival, where at this festival they will kill 10,000-plus dogs to eat as a big festival. Uh, do we look down at China? Should we try to prevent China from doing that? Um, is China okay to do it because it's their own sovereign land? Um, and then maybe on a lighter level, here in Ecuador and Peru, guinea pig is a very popular delicacy. They eat guinea pig all the time. Now, I have students who have guinea pigs for pets and they're repulsed by this, but is it okay? Should we make them stop? Can we make them stop? Or is it part of their culture? And in terms of pets, uh, which pets are ethically acceptable to keep? Now, some people want these very exotic pets. Now, in Florida, people wanted pythons and they released them into the wild and created a problem. Should we have prevented python ownership? Uh, some people will try to take a, a squirrel or a raccoon from their yard and domesticate it. Is this ethical? Is this not ethical? Should there be some sort of codified law how they should be treated? For instance, um, if you have a dog, do you need to walk your dog? Does the uh, leash have to be so long? Um, do they have to be out of a cage for so long? If you have a pet, are you responsible for spading and neutering the pet? Should that be mandated? Do standards change based on the animal? So I have a pet mouse, a pet chinchilla and a pet horse, do the standards change? Or are we consistent that every animal gets veterinary care and love and walks and adequately fed and not neglected? And again, what is neglect? What is a proper standard of care? It's hard to gauge. So to wrap up, I want to gauge your consistency of your ethical positions. So I want you to reflect. After all the conversations we've had, are your assertions consistent logically? Now, when you're asking yourself in the journal, what rights do animals have? What constitutes ethical treatment toward them? What policies should be in place regarding animal rights? I want you to take all of the discussion points we had today and make a cogent, logically consistent argument. And it's a tough issue. And, you know, with ethics, it is sometimes uh, tough to find your own ethical compass. And animal rights is a challenging issue to do that. But I look forward to reading what you wrote, and I appreciate you watching.